Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. We got uh, Peta's favorite member on the show yeah. today. Yeah, he's. Uh, I think he won their uh, p- uh, Person of the Year award last year. I think so. Is it is it Man of the Year? How do they do that over there? No, they don't believe in genders. So even, it's just a, even a, even for the animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a smooth front yeah. and back, so yeah. you can't tell what kind of holes they got on the yeah. body. So PETA started this uh, sub organization, and what they do is they find a uh, 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 deer with gender dysphoria, and mm. they put they either remove or put antlers on them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Makes a lot of sense. Makes yeah. a lot of sense. Uh, Steve Rinell is on the show. How are you, buddy? Good. How are you doing? Man, I'm I'm amazing. Um, your show has become massive, by the way. Uh, oh, your the your meat eater podcast is number seven in the world. Are you, are you familiar with that, or do you even follow that shit? No, because I don't, man. Because because the 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 way those things work, they're so goofy. You know, you could. I don't know how much you guys want to get into this. You know how it works. Yeah, they, look, they it, value, it's value. They value like like growth and and. Uh. and, and reviews so you had a podcast that just start like every podcast that starts out like you get a text from the guy right away he's like holy cow I'm top 10 and it's because you went from like zero downloads to nine but yeah it's like a massive <laughs> massive relative growth so no yeah. i don't i don't i don't yeah because the, the, the thing about you is i mean you have like the perfect trifecta right you're you, you've been on rogan a bunch of times which always helps uh you've got your own netflix series which is huge um, and then your podcast and it's like, all right, you're kind of the dude. Um, uh, forgive me for saying this, but, uh, you're kind of a, a, a better version of Ted Nugent. Oh man. Um, well, can you play the guitar though? Uh, is the real question. <laughs> Grab a guitar and play it for us right now. Cat scratch for you. I can't do that. When I was a kid, not a kid later than a kid drink, you know, pre drinking age drink like you know around that 18 19 age we would go see ted like we grew up idolizing nugent because we were from michigan man no Me fucking way you're not you don't look old enough to know nugent though no no no. i don't know well, i know him i mean i i we text and stuff a little bit now and then when something comes up but we we argue about chronic wasting disease over text message but uh <laughs> no we would go to his whiplash bash like it used to be just like in Detroit, you'd go to the whiplash bash, right. you know, and, and we idolized Nugent, man. Like, um, as like kids that hunted in Michigan, you know, he was, uh, he was, he really stood for something at, at that time in the early nineties, uh, mid nineties, mm-hmm. he really, he made, he made kids that were growing up there, you know, feel real proud about kind of like being from Michigan and being a hunter, you know? It was someone that we, uh, it was someone that we looked at and, and, uh, you know, thought he was badass. Uh, and so I grew up like, you know, uncle Teddy, man. Um, so to, to hear a comparison to uncle Ted, I don't know how accurate it is, but, but that you're, you're speaking to something that was a, a real felt thing at a point in my life. you know. Yeah. I, I mean, the comparison, as far as like, I feel like he made it acceptable in the mainstream to go and hunt and kill animals and be like, Hey man, this is not a taboo thing. Uh, you know, I do it. And, and here's the reasons I'm doing it. And I think that's, you know, another part of your success is you've made it relatable to normal people where, you know, I was breezing through some of your reviews and stuff. And, uh, like one of them, one, uh, lady was like, dude, I was a vegan for 16 years. I started listening to your show. Um, and the reasoning behind hunting and, and, uh, and what it can do to feed your family and everything else is the reason why I switched. I mean, there's, I mean, there's crazy shit, uh, written about you. That is, uh, the, it's because of the way you've been able to break it down to a mainstream culture and be like, Hey man, this isn't about like fucking rednecks shooting shit in the woods. Like, you know, just to do it, like this is food. This is how yeah. we're, you're feeding your family. Yeah, we, I mean, uh, all the, with all, you, it's, it's such a, an odd thing that there's a debate over it because there's such a, a disdain for the factory farmed meat uh, industry in America. And we all know the, the pitfalls of that from, from the, the antibiotics that we all ingested in chicken over the last 30 or 40 years, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and steroids and hormones and shit like that uh, to just the, the conditions in general that the animals are put through. And then when you take the responsibility on yourself 
and go out of your way to be a conservationist and kill exactly what you need to eat and nothing more and know exactly where your food comes from, people still find a reason to bitch about it, which is incredible to me. It's like people, it's, it's the outrage Olympics. People are just kind of waiting around to see what might offend them. And then they, it's, it's stupid. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But yeah, you've, the, the, in terms of like being, you mentioned Pete up at the top of the show. You know, I, I hear surprisingly little from them. You know, I mean, I've had like interactions with, you know, people that not even them as an organization ever, but people that might, you know, align themselves or view themselves as, as PETA supporters, PETA members. I've had interactions there. But, it, but it's funny that so many people that kind of look at what I do and look at our business, you know, oftentimes will think that they're looking at something that's like so controversial, you know. And, and I'll hear it all the time. Like, like some folks will look in and be like, my God, that's got to be a minefield, man. Like what you deal in. But then going about it in a day-to-day sense, right? Uh, like, I don't like day-to-day, month-to-month, whatever. I don't feel it. You know, I, I, I as you mentioned, we work w- w- with Netflix and, and have like a pretty frictionless relationship. We work with, uh, you know, we publish books with Penguin Random House, so like, you know, biggest publisher, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm never, as much as I'm told by some folks that, that this is so edgy and, 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 and red hot, like I, like, I just don't get it. I don't feel the ramifications of that as often as some people might think that I would. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? yeah, That's yeah, a good it's, sign, yeah. Though. It's interesting yeah. to hear it because you hear it so much in the media and everything else, and uh, it seems like it's probably overblown. But in real life, yeah, it's interesting to hear you say you don't really receive any of that blowback. Um, and then obviously your shows wouldn't be as successful as they are if there was this this huge outrage over it. Um, plus, you really do live that life. Like I, I, one would have to think you're indoors based on your background uh, there with the books and everything. Yet, you know, you've got a hat on that suggests it could be 18 below in the room you're in. <laughs> it's cold as shit outside, man. I've been in and out. <laughs> it's like weirdly cold in my house, too. Where, but, are, you, um, where are you right now? Uh, I'm in my office, which I can go like this and touch both walls up. because the, the dude that built this house intended this to be his wine room. Mm. Um, I was I was kind of thinking more geographically. Where are you? But yeah, oh, no, I'm, what's... Getting I'm getting there. I, I'm, doing, I'm doing a strategy called uh, uh, close to gross, right? Like I'm starting like <laughs> so in a, to, to expand outward. I'm in uh, Bozeman, Montana. Oh, okay, great. Nice. Yeah, uh, Yellowstone, Yellowstone country. You see Costner a lot? Totally kidding. Totally no, kidding. No, I don't. I know. But, I... Um, I'm not far. I'm not far from there, and I remember. Uh, Tried to get Costner because you know he's done a lot of films over the years that I've been pretty interested in, man. Like you know, um, Dance of the Wolves that was like an impactful movie for you know me and and I wanted to get Costner on. And I remember we reached out to try to like reach out to Costner's people to get him on our podcast, and it was that he you know was only he wasn't doing any media except he had done the cover of AARP. Oh, and I remember God. thinking like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Chaos, what's up, man? I mean, dude, the way that's, that's, that's the media you're doing is AARP. Dude, you don't want to like uh, just advice, you know, career advice there, man. You don't want to throw in entirely with the, the, you know, the, the, the people who are autumning out, man, you know? Yeah. Two, look, two things about Chaos. If you want him on the show, tell him you'll, you'll show his penis on air. Okay. Um, okay. cause he's, he's been, he's, that's his dream is to have his dick in a movie. His penis has been that. cut out of eight movies. Um, so is that right? yes, that is true. Um, Mr. Brooks is one of them oddly where you're just like, Oh, that one you wanted your, your dong in. Uh, there's a nice from behind shot where he's completely nude in front of a fireplace, like burning shit. And you're like, dude, no reason to be naked in that scene whatsoever. Obviously, you know, the oh, dr- doesn't he get naked burning all that pile of stuff in, yeah. in Dance of the Wolves? Yes, yeah. dude. That's that and, is because he wants his ding dong on screen. And Mr. Brooks, obviously. Mr. Brooks, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, there's a lot of them. Oh. Uh, Robin Hood. So Robin Hood, when he's swimming in that uh, waterfall, there's a yeah. part where he went. He tried to go um, backstroke, you know, so he could have the dong at the top of the water. Obviously, oh, they yeah, yeah. They, they cut that out. It was a PG-13 movie. You couldn't do that shit. 
Um, yeah, see, I went about this all wrong, man. I tried to do it the old fashioned way of being like, dude, I've always liked your movies. No, no. You got to say, hey, man, show me that hog, I'll brother. Talk to you guys first. Yeah. I wouldn't be here because I'd be interviewing him right now. You sure would, dude. You'd be, you'd be just hanging brains with Costner right now. Instead, you're on this fucking shit heap of a show. You know? You're like number seven in the world. Yeah, you're like number seven. I think we're like number 50 or 60. Like, this is a step down for you today. Let's face it. Uh, the other part about it is uh, KCOS, uh, they don't shoot that show in Montana. Just the, the exteriors. And then they shoot the rest of it in Utah. So you're going to have to... You're going to have to hike it up to Utah if you want to run into him and uh, Cole Hauser and the boys. Got it. Yeah, you know, uh, I haven't watched it yet, man. But I do find weirdly, the weird thing about it is that people I know that like it tend to apologize while telling you they like it. (laughs) They're like, dude, I'm sorry, but I love that show. I'm like, what are you sorry about? I don't apologize for stuff. I, I like. think there's still. I think st- people I know still. Why. People I know still why. get a, get a lot of heat for not shutting the fuck up about the wire, and then Breaking Game, Bad, Breaking Bad, and then oh, Game, and then Game of Thrones. Yeah. There was yeah, like a yeah. there's like a whole meme of people who won't shut the fuck up about their favorite show. Yeah, like if you heard of the wire, don't worry, you will. You know uh, what I mean, and then the other part about it is, I think people are apologizing because the show is about uh, like Californians and like rich yuppies trying trying to ruin Montana. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know how much time you spend there, like you know, on a yearly basis. But is that true? Is the hype real? Where all these people are coming in, driving up the the housing market and and all that shit? Is I heard uh, I was you know I wasn't born here, man. I moved to Montana to go to graduate school and then stuck around for a decade and left and came back. So I'm probably, as, you know, you could look at me and be like that I'm the problem. Uh, you know, I, I always think about what Jim Bridger would think if he came here now about how the place sure went to shit, you know. Mm. I think it's like relative, right? It's like, you, you know, you, there's a lot of places you come and everybody wants to be exactly uh, how they found it, which is pretty human you know like if i i lived in new york for a while and if i all the things i've heard about like where we used to go whatever buy food is now an an apple store Mm -hmm. i'm like what how could this be that's not how i like it you know yeah it's just it's just a human tendency man um you know even like when you like a band and then you get bummed when other people know about the band or you like a song and it's real obscure and then it goes into a movie And you're like, dude, I like that song before it was in that movie. By God, you know, I knew about it back then. It's just it's a human tendency. It has teeth in a place like this, though, because um, congestion and crowding are like actual, you know, like no one would really talk about like New York that it got like it got congested all of a sudden. Now I can't enjoy it. Right. But I I think in in remote areas and rural areas, there is a thing, a fundamental thing that gets lost when it gets congested uh but you know i like hunt and fish and trap and stuff and and um i don't feel like a real sort of like concerted effort by outsiders to make it that i can't do those things gotcha yeah i you always wonder whether or not it's you know condos are going in or casinos and all that shit Mm -hmm. and like because you you think of at least I do. Um, and it's probably like my romantic version of it. But you think of Montana and Wyoming as it like it's beautiful country, you know, where uh, the white man pushed the Indians off. So obviously we could hunt um, and that it's untouched and you can drink right out of the rivers. And it's amazing. Uh, but you don't ever think that, oh, somebody's going to move in there and just put, you know, a bunch of townhouses and all that shit there. Um because I, we were live on air on one of our shows, and we started looking up Zillow prices for, like, Bozeman and shit. And I was like, oh, my God. Uh, prices are really rising there. Um, oh, yeah. It's, it's shocking. I, it's weird. It just depends on where. You know, it's a huge state. It's 646 miles wide, right? So you go out to where my brother lives, um, out in Miles City. It's a very different, you know, it's a very different landscape out there. So it's super zip code dependent you know things are i do talk to people all the time who are blown away by housing prices but we're in the vicinity of a lot of ski hills you Mm, know yeah and and i think that that right like like that drive stuff up uh but it's a it's a big place there's a lot of room to there's a lot of room to do stuff man 
Yet my he, brother lives nine hours away from his wife, but they still live in the same state, right? <laughs> it's kind of like Texas, man. We're we're down in Austin, yeah, Texas, and it's like yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Jesus Christ, driving through it's this fucking to, thing. It's hard to like sum it up. Like it's hard to sum Texas up, right? Well, you, you could sum I mean? it up. Just start on the fucking east side at, on the Louisiana border, right, and then drive west for a while. I'd go by major cities. You run through a lot of weird shit in between those two areas. You do. You but start in the fucking bayou, and you end up wherever the fuck is over there. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's in West Texas. I know there's a lot of good places to hunt. I go by places I don't want to live in Texas, and that's where I tell people, where I'm like, San Antonio, I hate it. It's part of Texas, but uh, I, n I would never want to live there. El Paso, no need to ever go there in your life. Laredo, nothing like that. Austin's pretty rad. Dallas is pretty rad. Houston, eh, the strip clubs are rad. We did a live show inside a strip club down there. Is that uh, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, and that was on accident. Um, and we'll, we'll give a shout out to them, Bucks Wild was the name of the strip club down in Houston that we did a live show in. And, uh, that was impromptu. We didn't really plan it. We didn't stuff. plan it. And uh, one what? of our listeners actually got to have sex with a stripper in the VIP. Yeah, which is always nice. Maybe 10, 12 feet in front of us. And that was a nice thing. So He was just there to listen to the show. Just there to listen to the show. And then all of a sudden he, was, he got caught up in the moment, you know, as one uh -huh. does. And then his penis fell into one of those strippers who uh, is probably a doctor now. Um, because of all the money she made, you know, yeah. paid for school, contributing to society is definitely not taking a stimulus check. And uh, he had the time of his life and good on him. You know, we provided that. However, a necessary, I wouldn't want to listen. I wouldn't want to live in Houston necessarily. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Like Michigan, Michigan, you know, you're a big Michigan guy. I only know like three towns in Michigan, Dearborn, Lansing, Flint, and uh, Ann Arbor. So I know four, four yeah. towns in Michigan. What about That's Detroit? About it. Eh, <laughs> does it exist? Does Detroit, does it, is, it, is that real? Dude, we laugh about Detroit all the time because growing up in Michigan, I grew up in western Michigan in Muskegon County. Mm. And all, like, for, and, and based on my experience and all the years I spent there, it'd be that you'd move very much, like, only north and south. Like, you wouldn't move east-west. So you'd go like up north, you know, to Ugh. screw around because everything's everyone wants to go. Everyone has a cabin up north. Yeah. Or you'd go like south. And if we had to go to a city for some reason or another, we would loop around and go to Chicago. I remember I, w I was like a senior in high school. The first time I ever made it like just a, like three hours east to, <laughs> to, to, to see Detroit. <laughs> Since then, all I hear about is that Detroit's this new promised land where you can go and buy like, Oh, you could buy a, a skyscraper for a dollar and start an art store. You know, I, I don't know, man. It, it's like, I just like, I have such little awareness of it. Um, like I said, I grew up on the, on the, the, the West shore of Michigan and really liked it. Uh, have a lot of appreciation in, in a lot of ways. I still sort of, uh, you know, self-identify from that time when I broke up the last, uh, when me and the last girlfriend I had split up, I joked to my buddy, like, from now on, man, only Michigan girls. And then I married a girl from Michigan. Mm -hmm. Did you really? I, 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 yeah, I was cracked. Didn't meet her in Michigan. Didn't know her while I wasn't. But the minute I learned that she was from Michigan, I'm like, oh, okay, we'll throw them together. That's so it's like, it's like being in uh, Asia and you meet the only person that speaks uh, English. Yeah, yeah. Like, ah, fuck it. We'll yeah, her. let's get it. Let's, yeah. let's get it going. Let's do that. Yeah, because she knew what I was talking about when I talked about, like, Wesco Donuts. Yeah. Or... 94.5 the fm station she's like oh yeah you know and so it just made everything so much easier to, to she also knew discussions she probably knew a lot about what it feels like to lose to ohio state too <laughs> yeah well, yeah we, another thing we have in common is we have zero interest in organized sports well that's probably good for a michigan fan yeah yeah it is. or a michigan resident <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's why they haven't been good at anything in a while now i don't think yeah how was mom's spaghetti in detroit is it good or bad uh was eminem was that worth the hype or no did you ever go down to Eight Mile and check it out? No, I was too old for that stuff, man. Ooh. I was just old enough to be annoyed by it. Got it, got it. I didn't know if that was, was your, your time it. period. Okay. No, that didn't hit. I was living in Montana when that finally, when that whole thing kind of hit. Did, did it bring I a sense? cared about it. No, it didn't bring a sense of pride at all, like everyone else from, from Detroit? No. You mean like how we feel about Bob Seger? No way. <laughs> no way. It's like if, if I sit and list like great Michiganders, I'm like, I don't know, you have Bob Seger and I don't know. 
Oh, uh, uh, I just trail off after that. I yeah. love, dude, Seeger. I went to, uh, f- I think it was four or five years ago, me and my wife flew to Vegas for New Year's to see Seeger in Vegas on New Year's. It was one of those like bucket list things where I'm like, dude, I got to fucking see Seeger, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, Who's your favorite uh, person from Michigan, though, of all time? The, the the best The best athlete from Michigan is probably President Gerald Ford, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or at least the fantastic. most accomplished athlete, not as an athlete, but as a <laughs> as a human being. Oh, you mean like the most accomplished human that had been an athlete? Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he was a starting running back. That's our in most Michigan. accomplished athlete. I don't follow athletics, but dude, that can't. Be <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's got to be Magic Johnson pre aids. Oh I mean, no, I would, I would say Magic post-aids. Johnson pre aids. Yeah, well, post aids. He got richer. Who Francis knows? Ford Coppola is from Michigan. Is he? Are they really? Uh, the beauty of yeah, Michigan. Is he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, then that's my favorite Michigander. Are you sure? Yeah, <laughs> he was born in Detroit. In, uh, oh, there you ni- go. That's mine. 1939. I, I was gonna say I was gonna say Uncle Bobby, but now I'm switching over to Francis. Jerry Coppola. Jerry Bruckheimer. Yeah, there too. Bruckheimer. He from made there. all my uh, Coppola made all my like when I list my favorite movies of all time, like the first three are his. Oh shit, John Hughes is from uh, Michigan as well. He's is he a, really he's from Lansing? Yeah. Ah, damn it, dude. We you, were you I saying didn't, I didn't look at whatever web page you're looking at. This is Wikipedia, man. Yeah. Shit. Are you so? Are you when you said Uncle Bobby, you're talking about Kid Rock? No, Bob Seger. Oh, shit. I'm too old for Kid Rock. I'm, see, I'm turning 47 in a couple weeks. I was too old for Kid Rock. You look young as shit, dude. I, that's why I keep asking you so this. I got I'm my like, hat on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look like now. Nah, you it's go. still normal. You still nah, look young. Still good. You look like you're in your late 30s, to be honest. No grays. You're good nah. to go. No, I don't look. I don't. You, you, I don't. I don't look that old. I yeah. marvel at how old I'm looking. Listen. <laughs> no, Uncle Bobby. I was like, uh, I, did, I never got swept up in the Kid Rock thing, man. Gotcha. It was, it was just past like your time. I like a couple of those tunes. I like a couple of his tunes, but like, like, for I don't know why. It, I think that I even like I wasn't like a Bob Seger contemporary. Like Nugget, like Uncle Ted and Uncle Bob, like Nugent and Seger were our parents' musicians. Mm-hmm. They were our parents' musicians, but they held such a tight grip on the psyche. That, that, that we still felt that they were our own, even though they belonged to our parents. Like it was retro. You, you were, you were being retro without knowing you were being retro by, by liking the music of Bob Seger and like feeling a Michigan this there. Yeah, I, I agree. And like, th- I think that's why we went like, cause I had grown up with it. That was my parents, you know, bands like uh, Bob Seger mm-hmm. and those guys. And like, when you listen to his old albums, um, I remember uh, on Here I Go, at the beginning of that, he just walks up to stage and it's like a live album. And he's like, oh, here's a song called Here I Go. And you, you could feel it just in that deep sigh for like 10 seconds. You were like, oh, Christ, this guy's seen a lot of shit. Yeah, um, he's done that song a lot of times. If, you, you, uh, there, there's a writer I, I admire greatly, and he was very helpful to me in my career early on. Is a writer named Ian Frazier, and he once said to me, he said, whenever I think of people from Michigan, I think of people who say, fuckers. But <laughs> when, I, when I think of people from Michigan, like when you when kids are learning how to play guitar, you know, in high school or whatever, mm-hmm. they'd be like, when I, to, 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 this will mean something to Michigan people. Like to date myself would be that when, when, when people learn how to play guitars, they would learn how to play um, Fred Bear by Nugent. Mm-hmm. And they would probably know how to play night moves. It'd be oh, like, yeah. like everybody would be like, oh, I don't, they, and I don't play music, but I'm assuming they must be super easy to like get the basic gist of. Oh yeah. Like, it must be super easy to strum that, those when, songs. When you hear the first three chords of night moves, you know what's about to go on. And everybody in the bar says the same thing like, oh shit, dude, <laughs> night moves, man. I used to fucking bone to this. Or oh, I heard yeah, my dude. parents boning to it, you know? That's what that song, yeah, I actually, I don't want to take up your listeners' time with this, but I've actually spent a fair bit of time <laughs> deconstructing what that song is about. Well, I'll tell, you, about that. I'll tell you this, our listeners' time is uh, of no value at all. <laughs> None, Fuck dude. Em. This is, this is for em. us today, Steve. Jesus Christ. Give me, I want to hear, yeah, what's, what's your background? By the way, I guess on Night Moves. I, I want to hear that. I keep saying over and over that the 1970s, as a compilation, has the best music of any generation in the in modern history. Sixties and seventies, yes, for sure. So, fuck this. So you you just try to add in sixties because you like the Rolling Stones. The Rolling Stones Love suck. The Stones. They're no. terrible. Stones are Stones. Yeah, if you could take people from outer space who don't have any real context, right, and they don't 
and bring them down and be like, okay, here's a decade. Now, I'm not even going to put an order for you, but I'm going to showcase for you the greatest things of all these decades. I could picture that these out of space, outer space individuals would wind up flagging like the seventies as being like, hey, they had something going on there. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, like, it was, I'm, I mean, it was drugs, right? Let's be real. <laughs> it was drugs yeah. for sure. Yeah. And that's fine. I mean, look, it's, it's either that or Vanessa Carlton with that do 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 song. Yeah. And you, yeah. if, if the aliens show up and you start playing that, they're just going to rape all of us. Yes. Yes. I mean, that's it. You got to be like, Oh, these people are pussies. Let's just, Run through them and then we'll get out of here. Yeah, you put on Zeppelin to fight off the aliens, I yeah. think, to get, Number to get four, rid of the probably. aliens. What's your theory behind Night Moves? What is it really about? I got to know well, this answer. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. It's not that earth shattering, but I, I, I find that people, if you want to understand Night Moves, you need to really focus in on what I think of as the epilogue to that song, where uh, he, he, in the end, he talks about uh, woke last night to the sound of thunder, how far off I sat and wondered. And it winds up being that when you listen to the song, the song is about senescence. It's about growing old and losing it. Yeah, so it's about a. That's what it's about. It, People it, think it's like a celebratory party song, or like a you know like doing it out in the woods in the back of a car song. It's yeah. a song lamenting age. Started humming a tune from 1962. The ravages yeah. no. of time, man. Well, you know, now if you're writing a song called Night Moves, you shouldn't be worried about your age because uh, you could just be a sugar daddy these days, right? Mm. You, you could. Yeah, um, there's plenty of fucking girls in their early 20s cruising around looking for free shit. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I actually have the, the answer here. So, so it says Seeger wrote the song as a coming-of-age tale, so you're close, about uh, adolescence, love. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to counter. Uh, and the adult it's not a coming of well, age. Well, ha hang it's on, a growing old tale. Correct. So here, here's the rest of it. He says, and the adult memory of it, looking back yeah. at his life. So it was based on Seeger's own teenage love affair he experienced in the early 1960s. So shit, he really was boning uh, an older lady who taught him. Good for him. Taught him all the. Night Everybody moves. should do that. Right? Yeah. I, I had this, uh, Steve. I know you don't follow organized sport. Do you watch fighting though? Do you watch UFC and shit? I have, but not enough to be good at talking about it. Well, I don't need you to be good at talking about it. I just think that instead of wrestling in college, we should replace that with MMA because wrestling is fucking pointless. We're nostalgic about it because it's one of the very first sports hum humans did. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. But there's no practical application for it. MMA, though. Oh. MMA in college, right? Yeah. Even maybe in high school, at least the fundamentals you mean, like, of high there's school. There's no like bar fighting application for it. Right. Well, right. I mean, like, re yeah, wrestling can get you into college, but they don't have any scholarships because it doesn't ever make any money downstream. Oh, right? that kind of application. Yeah. I'm so, so yeah. the 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 idea. Dead end street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The idea would be that MMA is the fastest growing sport in the world right now. It's certainly in America, and we have done nothing downstream to make sure that we're getting good candidates into that in a way that makes sure they're still educated and that they're prepared. Mm -hmm. They're prepared in a way that they're one prepared for the success. Mm -hmm but they're also backstopped in case they fail, right? And they're training from a young age to do that. If you want to make the best of something, you have to start as early as possible training, right? Right. I think that would be a good thing. Well, hey, one well, could you guys, would, the, would you MMA guys, would MMA guys be comfortable with a, a touch football, a flag football version? Because you're going to have a lot of reluctance on behalf of parents. Right. But we don't have touch or flag you know football. Like we don't have like, touch okay. or flag football in high school. They they rock the shit out of each other, right? Like yes. we we have. No, just, there's, just, there's, just, I don't really care about the outcome. I'm yeah. just trying to be helpful. No, no, I, no I got on, it. On I, the way up, I know what he's saying. There's because now be, it's flag football pretty much up through middle school because they're worried about kids banging each yeah, other's heads together. Yeah, but once you're together. in literally in seventh grade, yeah. seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, right? Yeah. Six years, you're playing full contact football before you even get to college. Right. So I don't know if it's really certainly we shouldn't have. You know, twelve-year-olds rocking each other's brands or anything like that. But no, what saying, you're going to need to, you would need to. Uh, you, you just you're going to have a lot of reluctance from parents. Oh, man. for sure. I, I hear you on that, and, it, and it's fun to like wrestle. Uh, pun, I don't know, intended or not intended. Fun to wrestle <laughs> with that. You would. It would be like real. Uh, I don't know if you got kids, but you know, uh, have being like you know, go out and cage fight. Yeah, yeah. A none, a cage none, like that guy. Yeah, none, none, I got a six-year-old. I'd, I'd put him in a cage today. Let him, let him go nuts, dude. Let's figure it out. Well, that's the thing. More and more Let's parents, because of the popularity of UFC and Bellator and other organizations, more and more parents are getting their kids involved in 
in mixed martial arts at a young age now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, there's, I started my son at four. Um, one could say the same thing about like bow hunting, right? Yeah. When's the, it's a, it's a skill that you can use when all of this, when all this collapses, right? Yeah. Because you know, take this year and everything that's gone on. I hate talking about the fucking COVID bullshit and all that shit, but like, it really was a, a moment in time or it is still where it's just like, Hey man, if there's a worldwide pandemic and you have to fucking feed yourself and all the grocery stores are sold out of shit, uh, hunters will survive and the rest of, you know, 90% of America is probably going to fucking die. Um, you know, cause I'm sure you were fine when all this broke out. You were just like, ah, shit, another Tuesday for me. You know, I get a meat, uh, I get, I get a fridge full of meat. I'm good to go. Yeah. We did not feel the grocery crisis. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't either. Like I had I already had like a hundred pounds of meat frozen in my in my house so i was like all right cool i mean the toilet paper thing was weird but i've also got a bidet so it's been bidets uh frozen meat and uh the towel obviously my my bath towel to sure to dry off to dry off yeah you gotta you gotta give it a, a once through you can't walk around with a wet butthole all day no it's it's a terrible feeling yeah uh do you bidet it up or did the tp crisis hit you uh, we must, I, I think we kind of like generally run our program to be pretty, um, uh, we're, we're just pretty well stocked all the time, man. But when, the, when things really, uh, when, when things, when, when shit really hit the fan, we were down in Baja. You can't help with the puns, can you? Like it's, it's happening. Yeah. You know, it's you happening and you don't even fucking realize it's happening. Steve, this That's is like the third time. crazy now. I know. You just it's like, that it's I'm, like, it's I'm like the, not to do that. it's like the other guys when Michael Keaton wouldn't stop singing those TLC songs over and over. Yeah. 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 That yeah. It's just happening. You, All just, right, you don't going. want no yeah, scrubs. I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna do that without. I'm gonna do that without one. When, uh, <laughs> the pandemic, the pandemic really got rolling. When everybody had a collective like, "Wow, what is happening?" We were down in. I was with my family, and we were in Baja, and um, and I remember thinking we we had to, we rented a house, and I remember thinking about taking all of that toilet paper back home with me, but didn't do it. But we're just like, I guess we're just like, we got a pretty well stocked, we got a pretty well stocked program. And I never, I, we didn't have, we didn't suffer any shortages. That's good for you, man. We, I did. I was, I was unprepared for any form of pandemic or the possibility of it. I had about eight rolls left and a uh, family of four that runs out pretty quick. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm lucky enough uh, to be solo. Right. So yeah. I, the same, the original uh, like 12 pack of turlet paper that I bought. At, uh, the beginning of the pandemic just ran out like a month ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so you're good. Yeah, we ended up getting a bidet sponsor on the show. Hello, Tushy. I mean, how much shitting is happening at your house? Well, I, mean, I understand I, there's I get four a people. Six year, yeah, I got a six-year-old and a two-year-old, and they just kind of shit when they want. Um, and Yeah, but uh, the two-year-old's not wiping its ass with normal toilet paper. No, 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 right? but he's... No, but it, they, they, you, don't, you don't want to understand. They just, they go, I don't know, they, they have a way of just, like, going through it, like... They're super little, but the, the, what, the, they're, they're always plugging the toilet up. Like they put so much of it in there. Yes. Yep. They just, it, they're not like, they're not like, they don't wake up being like, how can I conserve resources today? Oh yeah. No. That's certainly true. No. Yeah. And, and whenever I see shit anywhere, either in the house or the backyard, my wife and I always have to say, is that animal or human? Cause we don't yeah, really know. Yeah. Um, cause they yeah, could, they could the dump light switch. Yeah. Yeah. Like how, why is it on the light switch? That reminds me of one of my very favorite pranks. And that's if somebody has a cat litter box in their house. Oh yeah. Clooney. Uh, take a shit in yeah, it. Yeah, I'll take yeah. a shit in it. Yeah, I, I've I've done that three <laughs> times now. Yeah, it's hilarious. Well, it's not funny for the uh, not the, funny for the recipient. It's funny for me. But uh, they take <laughs> yeah. that cat to the vet every time. One, you know? Yeah, one time I did it, and uh, it was at a house party, and I didn't know anybody there except for one person. And it was not. <laughs> it wasn't the person that owned the house. <laughs> so I never really found out how that turned out. Ah, uh, that's a sad. They day. probably put their cat down. To yeah, be they had to. You have to like, inject oh my that God. cat. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta put it down. <laughs> You got to put it down. Um, since, look, <laughs> since you're a big hunter, uh, the bear rape scene in the DiCaprio movie, real or fake? Yep. Can, is it possible to get raped by a bear? Uh, you know, I, I haven't heard of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but there was a lot that in that scene. You know, we had the. Yeah, I, I had so many problems with that film, and 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 have quite a bit of respect, um, and, and have a friendship with the the guy that wrote the book that the you know, film was adapted from. Right. Uh, but, you know, I, I had a lot of friends that watched that bear scene and were actually pretty, um, they liked aspects of it. And, and part of it that rang true with people, you know, I've talked to quite a few people that have been mauled by them. And, and uh, 
part of the rang true is it's sort of like almost where the bear gets this kind of casual attitude later <laughs> once it's neutralized the threat and that they kind of go off and come back you know yeah and, and so that aspect of it rang true with a lot of accounts you read of that they think it's over you know <laughs> then it goes and like does something and then it comes back and decides to pick you up and shake you around a couple of times and bite you a bunch because that's what happens just, yeah you you leave your guard down you're like okay cool the bear attacks over and then all of a sudden the bear comes back in a frame and rapes him and you're like ah shit man they weren't prepared yeah, yeah it's kind of like rape. it's kind of like game of thrones where uh uh, fucking the bastard kid lets uh, uh, Theon Greyjoy loose. Yeah. Pretends he's on his side, then he captures him and cuts his dick off. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Pretty much the same thing. Almost identical. Yeah. I, I, I talked to a, a young feller that had got mauled pretty bad by a grizzly, and he talked about uh, he's trying to, he's laying there, you know, trying to hold dead still after it gets done, and he can, the way his, the way his head is, you can just see, you know, and he keeps catching a glimpse of its foot messing around. And he's like deathly afraid to move again. Um, and, and he said he was trying to like imagine in his mind, like how much time would go by that he could safely get up and haul ass without it deciding to come back and re-kill well, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's it's interesting to want to think of yourself in that situation of, so desperately wanting to get out of there, but knowing that by twitching your finger, you might re-invite the wrath. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so basically bears are like a very abusive husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like uh, Ike Turner. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, you, what do you do, by the way, in that situation? What do you do? What do you, if, you were, if you're getting fucking mauled by a bear, what do you do, actually? Oh, man. You know, the thing is, guys like me, like, we spend an enormous amount of time talking about all the shit we're going to do when we get attacked by a bear and you know and oh like you know is pepper spray better than the pistol and like is the 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 44 mag really like the thing or what about something with a higher capacity and you know and if i can't get it done with my 10 millimeter then it ain't going to get done and when it happens like when it comes for you man it happens fast you know and and I've been in a couple situations of getting charged. It's just like it's so. It 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 it, it rattles you really bad. And let me give you a case in point. Uh, a buddy of mine. A buddy of mine was sitting there, and we were in a in a in a compromised situation in terms of bears one time. And he's got pepper spray on his belt. And he lays his pistol. He, he's eating lunch. Pepper spray on his belt takes his pistol out, lays his pistol on his backpack next to him. Mm -hmm. Here comes a bear, and what does he do? He stands up and smokes it with a trekking pole. It's like all your all the plans, man, like all the plans go out the window. <laughs> well, yeah. it's because there's no real way to trade for that situation, but I think exactly. I might have I think I might have a solution. Okay. A Cato bear. Okay. Familiar with Cato, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, OJ's house guest. No, no, no. no oh, oh no. Cato Kalen? No, no, no. God damn it. Both oh. of you shut the fuck up. I'll, I'll put a so, bear in my guest no, house. No, god damn it. You pay a guy like Cato, <laughs> like Inspector Clouseau did, to randomly attack you. So you just pay a bear to just, like, you're walking down the street in Manhattan, all of a sudden a full-grown grizzly comes out and fucks your ass up. Yeah. Right? That'd out be, of nowhere. That'd be great. That'd be phenomenal. The problem is I don't know how much tax you pay income tax with bears. Bear tax? Do they pay income tax or do they fall under the native category where they're off that? I don't, I'm sure there's a clause in there. Well, Nailed we have it. CPAs Nailed coming it. in tomorrow. We do. So we do. we'll ask them about <laughs> how bear attacks let me, let me factor you, in. Let me know what you find out there. You know, we were talking the other day about we're going to design a thing we're going to do uh, with the guys I work with. We're going to take give everybody the, a revolver and then get on a slope and have some have someone on the other side of the slope huck up a basketball. Mm. So it's bouncing down the hill at you. Yeah, try and shoot that thing as it's moving. And be like, okay, take that, take your six shot forty four there, and put a couple holes through that basketball. Yeah. Good luck it's coming down the hill. At Good luck. You. Good luck. And I'm, I'm like, like, I'll be like, you know, I'd like to do my session in private, please. Yeah, but you have to do it. Uh, make them run a mile first, so their adrenaline's up and they're exactly. fucking out of breath, and then do that shit. Good luck. Yeah, That's, someone's going to come up and punch you in the face, yeah. and then you're going to do that. That's what we know. used to do with the machine gun. We would take our full three-man machine gun team, and we would run like two miles with all of our gear, like mm -hmm. a 1,000 rounds of ammo, the machine gun, the big-ass M3 tripod. Then you get to the range. Then you shoot. 
Ah, then then, then we'll see sense. who's good and who's not good. Right. right? right. My buddy, uh, excuse me, my buddy Christian Tobler, you get like, I think 120 rounds because mm-hmm. it's a machine gun, right, to qualify. Sure. He took 12 rounds. Pop, pop, pop. Hit every single target. I'm like, with one shot, I'm like, sweet. I guess we'll all just go home, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you yeah. didn't really have to do that, okay? Yeah. We all know what's going on here. Yeah, but it's like a bear. You want to assert your dominance, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and he got stood up immediately and pissed all over everything. Oh, uh, did he really? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not true. I made that part up. I, I made I, uh, that. You know, in, in the bear front, like, I, I, I say that, but, um, you know, I think that there are, like, things to keep, you know, there are definitely things to keep in mind, and definitely, I don't, I don't mean to act like there's not. There's things to keep in mind. There's back pra- best practices, but I just I marvel a little bit at, um, I marvel a little bit at how having like fear, like you, like you said, to train for it, right, is important because how having these, how holding these concepts in your head, like play dead, don't play dead, you know, all this stuff. I think if it just lives in your head as these kind of like free floating best practices, um, it, it just it, it's it's kind of crushing to see how quickly your 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 system falls apart when it's when it's just stuff that's hypothetical and never rehearsed yeah everybody wants to be a gangster until it's time to do gangster shit yeah i remember the first yeah. time bullets whizzed past my head i was like all right that's uncomfortable yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but i like luckily you have other people around you and everybody starts running towards the gunfire and your brain just stops and just like fuck it that's what i'll do and after the first time it happens you never do anything else but it's, yeah, it's you don't you don't want to have a second bear attack Right. No, no. If you if you have a second bear attack, I feel it's like it's being like struck lightning, by lightning. Yeah. yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Um, have you ever been attacked by an animal? Uh, no, not, I mean, not like in a no, not in a bad way. Just online, like on Reddit and shit. Yeah. Like there's a bunch bear. of bears. No, like, like this guy hunts bears, man. He's a murderer, and it's like it's a it's an icon <laughs> of a bear up there. Like, dude, you're clearly a bear. Shut the fuck up. You don't get to choose. I uh. No, I mean, just minor stuff, man. Like, I got run over, you know, I, I got run over by a moose that I wounded. Fuck that. And, and he, tra- he charged me, and, and it was, and I thought he got me pretty good, too, but because he kind of stabbed me in the back a little bit oh. with, the ant- with the tine. And I put my hand back there and, and kept looking at my hand, and it had all oh. blood all over it, and I thought it had a, I had a hole in me. But then I realized it was just the moose's blood. I was it? Was it that? Oh, it was after you shot him? Yeah, I'd hit it oh. in the brisket. So all the blood I was trying to figure out where it was coming from was was his. And then like you know, like close calls with you know little charges with bears. But no, man. Like in turn, I've been attacked by a lot of microorganisms, yeah, but I haven't shit. been attacked by a macroorganism in any kind of real notable way. Yeah, yeah. One of the things uh, one of my friends that hunts a lot told me is just like one of the most important things to remember is that you're that's not your home. That's their home. You're inside their home right now and act like it. Mm. Like be respectful of the area. Don't fucking walk around like like a jackass and do stupid shit. And chances are you're gonna be all right. Yeah. Don't take yeah, a swing I at him. I mean, sorry. Don't take a swing at a moose, right? You can't just walk up and punch a moose. In no, the they face will fucking just murder to do you. Do it, yeah. No, oh. we used to have a bad habit of running after them, which is, <laughs> I now understand to be super stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> running after them, huh? I mean, moose, moose and elk. Oh, we used to like to chase after them for some reason. It's the weirdest thing, man. Whenever I see people at these game farms, or not even, out, especially out in like on federal reserves, where they're trying to pet like moose and elk and and fucking uh, bison and shit, like, yeah. dude, you are not, and you're not yeah. doing the right thing, right there. You need to get the fuck out. When that lady got trucked by that yeah. bison that one time, that was awesome yeah you don't pet food no you definitely don't yeah i mean i've done it just to do it obviously but uh you know i felt like i was faster than the animal and i felt okay during the situation you know yeah what's a bear's 40 time boy i think they run what 30 miles an hour right yeah i mean you yeah you always see that thrown around 35 Um, 35. they have like the cape the, 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 the the capability is there for sure but when i've seen them around people and they, they come in in kind of a herky jerky kind of fashion you know like like they, they they do things in sort of like these spasms of activity you know yeah uh, they, they do but it's just different it winds up being different than that it's not Let's, like a you picture like a car driving 35 and it has this sort of like stasis to it right like it's moving that speed but they're right. just very start stop start stop stand up dodge you know 
go around something, come back, snap your teeth, run real fast, stop. You know, it's just, it's, it's very erratic. Got it. Are you friends with any of these celebrity bear people? I don't know why we got on bears today, but I love it. Um, probably because you're from Montana, but uh, like Bear Grillis, what's his fucking story? Is that guy real or not? One, you say he's a celebrity bear person because of his name? Yeah, yeah. I just don't. It's like, dude, if you're going to fucking name yourself after an animal, you better goddamn I, know I, everything about I it. I think his parents may have given him the name. I, I doubt no, I it. Think that's his, my understanding is that's his birth name, and no, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, Fact not, check not, that, Hot Bob. Fact check it, Hot Bob. Not, I'm not friendly. Not, not, not that I'm not friendly. I, I never met the guy. Never yeah, met yeah. The guy. Well, yeah, but uh, just, we, we, we run in decidedly different circles. Yeah, like you live that life. Do you ever watch shit like that? And you're like, fuck that guy, man. That's not real. It's maddening. It's maddening. That's man. that Survivor I, Man I, I guy does a lot of episode. legit shit, though, right? You, you know Survivor he Man. He does like he does some legit shit. Yeah, he's shit, got right? a much less Stroud. He's got a much much like among among outdoorsmen. Mm. Okay, like I'm not talking to the American population in general. I'm not right. talking about TV viewers. Among outdoorsmen. A, a commonly held sentiment would be like if those two names get thrown out it would be like yeah you know les stroud he's legit right a lot of that stuff's legit you'd hear a sentence like that you'll never have that sentiment extended to his you know uh, i don't know if they associate themselves as in the same gang you know you'd never hear that sentiment so you know extended to bear grills the, the, the one time i watched his show years ago he took uh, some elephant shit. <laughs> he, he was like talking about sourcing water. Yeah, drain the water out of it. Standing water. He was he come across some standing water and determined that this standing water wouldn't be uh, suitable for human <coughs> consumption. So he grabbed elephant shit and squeezed the shit water into his mouth, which is like mainlining um everything you're trying not e to e get e coli talk about it's just it's a coli <laughs> that's what's in shit by the way jesus christ man you There's can like, also you can also get meningitis from that yeah by the way yeah. like a good rule is like when drinking water um avoid shit like yeah shit's your enemy yeah if you, you want water if you could find water that's yeah, 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 just like, yeah. if you could find water that's, yeah, that's, that's running that's that's still water in the uh in the wild not a good idea right right, right. So if it's running over rocks or sand or something like that, generally pretty safe to drink. Uh, inside of poop seems unlikely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But hey, you know. We all find sources of uh, this dude, you know, pleasure from other things. It might not have been survival, just the, you yeah, know, he getting may have off. Hungry, yeah. it, it could be his kink. Yeah, maybe he's we like. We don't uh, kink shame here on this show, obviously. Maybe, maybe he's oh, like. Oh, uh, I never thought about that, man. That could be a thing. Yeah, yeah that, that's a good theory, man. Look, a little dookie juice, juice, dude. Yeah, maybe he's like Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, just a little dookie juice, dude, to get the systems going in the morning, you know? Just a little a little shot of DJ. Little. little yeah, a little dookie juice to yeah. get it going. What about that fucker who lived with the bears at his house and shit? Grizzly man? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. They oh, got, that no, eventually got murdered. Okay. Got killed, but yeah, he he, spread well. Yeah, yeah. He lived in Katmai. Yeah, listen, man. Guys like me, I keep referring to guys like me. Guys in my sort of <laughs> circle, or they they come from my experience, love to hack on Treadwell. They like, like that idiot. He should have known better, you know. But I had nothing but massive respect for that guy because he could out camp. He could out camp anybody I hang out with. Yeah. You go spend, listen, you go spend seven summers in a row hanging out in that mosquito infested hellhole. Not, not, I don't mean to speak bad. I love, you know, it's a great spot, but to, to like through the rain, the incessant rain, fog, like six species of biting insect trying to just like kill you. The, 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 the constant fear of those bears being around you and to do that, I don't know how many, seven years in a row? Yeah. Whole damn summer? It's like, you go do that, dude. He could hack stuff. If, if we're going to hold up, if we're going to hold up like endurance and hold up like fortitude as things that we respect, then don't hack on that guy. And the other thing is, all this talk like, oh, he should have known better. He did know better. He prophesied that that would be his mm -hmm. end. Yeah, but he was comfortable with it. I don't know why. It's like people, especially go to Alaska. You know, every Alaskan thinks they're like you know Joe Bush, right? <laughs> yeah. Every Alaskan's like, oh, you know that that little city slicker. By God, it's like you haven't done a tenth of what that guy's done. 
So I, I don't, I don't, I have no truck in uh, acting like he was, he was probably a little bit crazy in yeah. that, in that you might regard someone who's going to try to do their second summit of K2 as right. being like, you're like, but but that's cool crazy we don't care about that kind of crazy but going to live with bears makes you kind of like an asshole like yeah that's a fair that's point it. that's a fair that's point that's a fair that's a fair point everybody's on the k2 shit they come off with like a, a missing nose and like fingers and all that shit me yeah. and my wife were watching <laughs> one heroes, of those. Man. yeah me and my wife were watching that and it was like uh uh the one dude had like kids you know they were like teenage boys or whatever and uh the guy was like no I'm definitely going to go on this hike again. And up, up the side of this fucking mountain, half of his nose is missing. He was missing like three fingers already because of frostbite. He ends up dying. And they were like, well, that's what my dad wanted to do. It was like, hey, yeah. your dad was just an asshole. Like, what yeah. the fuck? I like Rogan's yeah, bit on I don't, Ro- Rogan. I, I would never hack on, like, I would never hack on, like, alpinists. Like, like if I wasn't into what I was, I don't really know if this is true. If I wasn't into what I'm into. I could see a world in which I would get interested in that. Like I could see that I would have been drawn to, to, to big mountain stuff, but um, there's something to be explored in the fact that it's like, it's, it's, it's at a level, it becomes death wishy. And you mm. talk to people that are into that world and they like slowly run out of friends. And a lot of them at the, the ones that are performing at the highest level, they're, they're, they're in a game. They know how the game ends. Yeah, it's like being in the mob or some shit. Like, you know you're yeah, going to end up dead or in jail old. at some point, yeah. They know you don't get old. Well, I mean, look, I, I like Rogan's take on that shit. He said some stuff is just hard, and there's no real reward for it, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, you can you can work hard at a sport and make millions of dollars. You can work hard at writing and, and producing a television show. Mm-hmm. You can make a lot of money. You can do a lot of things that are very difficult, both physically and mentally, and, and succeed in some way that is tangible. You climb that shit. You cl- climb Everest. Like, yeah, your name is on Wikipedia now, but what else happened? Yeah, you know what I mean. You got to go down to Hobby Lobby, make your own fucking bronze thing, hang it in your office, and yeah. be like, "Yeah, dude, I hiked Everest." <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, because I bought my own trophy, and it's hanging on the and wall. There's no a real. Plaque. There's no real reason to do that other than to just do. We like people have been up there before. This is what yeah. Rogan's is like. Yeah, people have been up there before. If it, it's and it sucks. Yeah. Like yeah, that's yeah. why we're down here. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, we'd be up there already. So just. Fucking do something else. That's probably. Uh, that's what I say. Yeah. Do you have like oh, a? No, I like I like knowing those guys are out there, man. I like knowing they're uh, out there, up there. I like knowing they're up there. I like it too because I feel like all right. There's a segment of people that I'm smarter than, and it's those fucking guys. <laughs> like that's the only thing I like to know about it. Where it's just like, oh, homeboy's gonna lose his nose today, and I've got to go into the studio and interview, you know, somebody about uh, what it's like to be tased or whatever the fuck I'm talking I like, about. Today. I like the old. I like. <laughs> keeping the old ways alive right even in like uh in in the military we have all sorts of sophisticated gps ship you still have to learn how to use a compass just in case your technology fails right Mm -hmm. we've got helicopters pretty much guaranteed we'll get you to the top of everest whenever you want to go up there so there's no reason to fucking walk up that bitch that's all i'm saying none like yeah yeah, i got you you. if we need to get up there we'll get up there yeah you know fucking save your money at at rei save your fucking gift card does anybody ever try to cheat the everest climb like they get picked up somewhere by a helicopter and flown to the top because that's happened that's happened with the fucking marathon yeah specifically the new york marathon like three separate times yeah right so I wonder, it's got to have happened. At least, at least somebody's thought about trying somebody it. Somebody cheated well, at Everest. That, some rich dude. I, I'm anything but a subject matter expert on that world, but I know that there is, you know, uh, you can find some great people to talk to you about it, but there is like, a, you know, assisted, unassisted, uh, supplementary oxygen, no supplementary oxygen, how much of your shit did you carry? Um, yes. And, and there's a sentiment that, that it's possible with Everest, I think K two is a different ball game. But with Everest, there's a sentiment that you, you, that it is possible to buy your way to the top. Mm. Oh yeah, that'd be great. That. Then I'd love to pay like eight super like poor people to drag me to the top of that thing. Well, I'm just in like a one of those pizza cubes, you know. Well, you know the good thing, like, it's super warm in there, yeah. and I'm just ch- I'm just chilling, dude, just eating Little Caesars all the way to the top, drinking hot chocolate and shit, eating crazy bread the entire time, and I'm like, dude, keep going. I don't. I don't give a fuck how cold you are. I paid you to do a job. Well, you wait till after to pay them because chances are you're only going to be paying two instead of eight. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Just saying. 
That's do, you just, have, <laughs> do you have a weird we'll death set, wish we'll like that? Up, we'll roll back down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll give you. I'll throw you a stick of crazy bread if you just shut the fuck up and stop shaking uh, from from the cold. Yeah, I'm trying to watch Netflix, bitch. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ, man. Uh, you know, Queen's Gambit just came out in season two, and I haven't seen that yet. Keep keep walking. Uh, what about you? Do you have a, a crazy death wish to die like out in the woods by an animal, like death by an animal or any of that shit? I was thinking of that Brad Pitt movie where he goes up into uh, yeah, Legends yeah. of the Fall and he's yeah. like, yeah, I want to I want to die by the bear and, and all that crazy shit. Is that you? You know, man, I've joked about that a lot and, and that's it. Right. Joked a lot about, um, you know, that, that I'd like to get mauled, but I don't want to get hurt that bad. Um, <laughs> I don't have to get mauled a little teeny bit. Just like a fender bender, yeah. 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 A little Yeah, way. like the fender bender yeah. equivalent of a mauling. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I have entertained, maybe I was more nostalgic at a time, but like entertained the idea that I would have some friends. You know, like uh, Ed Abbey, Crazy Horse, um, one of the guys from Flying Burrito Brothers, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that their body like winds up vanishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I used to think that I would burden my survivors with the chore of, of waiting seven years to file your fucking death certificate. Oh, right? put me up somewhere where I would put my carcass up where it would just get scavenged by bears and stuff. Mm, I see. Yeah. 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 But you know, I, it's, it's kind of juvenile, right? But it does stick in my mind as something that would be pretty cool, but that's not a death, wish. that's a post death wish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. I've got a post death wish. I don't want to well. be brought up early, man. My post death wish is just to throw me in the trash. Although yeah. I, it would be, dumpster. yeah, yeah, yeah. dumpster. He just it, wants to go in a dumpster. It would be fun to get stuffed. Uh, yeah. Oh, like, uh, like shit, uh, taxidermy. Yeah, taxidermy, yeah. and just get like left right over here on the side, side of the stage. Yeah, I'd prop you up. I would put you in some. Uh, what's the fucking juice they put you in? Formaldehyde. Yeah, yeah. I'd put you in a nice little formaldehyde cage. Uh, so I'd still put the mic up to you, and then ask you why it doesn't work all the time. Be like, oh, Dan's mic doesn't work today, so I'm going to have to yeah, interview you separately. He's been real quiet lately. You know? Yeah, yeah well. I can't figure it out why. He's, uh, oh, he's been fucking dead for eight years. Yep. Hot Bob, is uh, Bear Grylls, is that his real name? I think it is. No, he it's was. Not. It's not. It was, he, but he was given his nickname by his sister when he was like uh, a week old. Oh, so he's oh, like. It's a, nick, it's a nickname. It's what's his real name? So, yeah, he's, like, his real name? so he's like Beto O'Rourke then. Yeah. 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 Uh, his real name is Edward. Edward. Yeah. yeah. Are you serious, dude? Oh, Eddie Grills? Okay, Teddy Grills. <laughs> Tedward Grills. <laughs> Fuck him. The nickname by his... Oh, come on. Really? Yeah. Really? His sister called him Bear. I think that's better than him just, like, self-assigning it. Well, yeah, but you don't know if that story's true or not. True. Man. Yeah, no, it true. is. It, well, you know, no one's going to say, like, I made it up. Like, I keep thinking about naming myself Steve Fever, but I can't do it because I would have been the guy that came up with it. Steve Fever is a nice one because uh, it's porn. Fever. It's porn and it's also fucking lead guitarist, you know? Oh, yeah, it's everything. It's everything. But I can't do it. Like, I can't, like, have that be that I come up with my own thing. I know. You, you can't have your own nickname. I wanted to be Wolf Mother for a long time, but, you know. That was just me where I was just like, all right, sweet, man, Wolf Mother. And then when people ask me, like, dude, what's your last name? Well, it was going to be Fucker, but the government doesn't allow it. So it would have been Wolf Motherfucker. But it's like, obviously, you can't have a swear word as your last name. So it would have just been Wolf Mother, right? Why did the government get to tell us what we can and cannot name our children? It's bullshit. Uh, that that I changed. That, I don't know. Is that true? I yeah, it is. is. Yeah, because Elon Musk went through that in California when he named his kid a bunch of weird-ass symbols. They were like, no, you can't do that. He's like, well, actually... I can do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah, but they're going to end up calling that kid like Timmy or something. Um, yeah, little Timmy. It, yeah, it's, it's a bunch of fucking at symbols and like ampersand signs and it's shit It's Archangel like that. X or X Archangel, I think is how you pronounce it, if I'm not mistaken. Whatever, man. Yeah. Got it. Um, I know this, though. When, they, uh, when he got circumcised at birth, they shot it up into space. So the yeah. circumcision's flying above Earth right now. Well, it exploded. That true? It exploded no. and it's slowly no, raining down through the no. troposphere right now. I just made that up, just like uh, Bear Grylls made up his fucking name. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can you imagine, like, it would, Sting did the same thing, right? He named himself like a present uh, verb. Yeah, yeah. Present tense verb, sting. Not stung. Sting. No. Not, 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 not fucking stinging. Not a Jared. It's, it's sting. It's uh, so, sort of the guy in U2, The Edge. It was like, yeah, dude. I always wonder about that. Like, that, like the, a name like that, like, when you're hanging out and he, and he, like, gets up to leave and, you know, and he leaves his jacket. Are you supposed to say, um. Excuse hey, me, uh, Mr. The Edge? Uh, uh, the Edge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it seems as though you left your jacket. 
Like, I, like, come on. No, man. there's a very reasonable explanation for that as well. And I'll go back to the explanation from before. It's drugs. Yeah. Like, you two was all sitting around uh, uh, doing drugs. He's like, I'm going to call myself the edge. Now, well, dude, you're 5'8". You weigh 120 pounds. You really want to go with the edge? Yeah, he does. He's been wearing a beanie since he was 22, balded early. Yeah. And he's just like, fuck it. I got to give myself a dope-ass name so nobody asks me what's underneath the beanie. Well, do you Let's think, go with the edge. Do you think that guy from ACDC thought he was still going to be wearing shorts 60 years later? No. Oh, fuck, dude. And he probably got should've. stuck on that bit. Yeah, he probably should have chosen some lager pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold as shit in England, too. What the fuck was he thinking? I don't know. You know? Now he's dressed like this little newsboy everywhere yeah. he goes. And now, it's like, oh, and he's fuck. old as fuck and his circulation's bad. And he's just freezing to death slowly. And that's the bit, man. You yeah. got to live out your fucking bits. Oh. Uh, Steve, this is the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who inspires you or helps you become the person you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? Obviously, Bear Grylls. I mean, let's yeah. Be Bear Bo. Edward. Edward Grylls. Edward Grylls. Damn. Yeah. What about uh, Steve Irwin? He was another outdoorsman who died too soon. Uh, no, I would. Can I give it? I, I would rather do my. Um... My brother's Matt and Danny. That's yeah. Can I just split it? Yep. Yeah. 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 You can do whatever you want. This is America. Very influential. Very influential. In what way? Uh, we were, uh, you know, grew up real close together, hunting, uh, you know, being doing all the things people do, but hanging out, swimming, whatever. But we also did a lot of hunting and fishing, and uh, and and uh, I guess sort of collectively, maybe motivated by one another thought that there would be some other thing to do with it all you know and 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 i imagine that if, if without uh doing it together um pursuing like dreams we had or objectives we had without doing it together to kind of measure progress against one another i i could picture that any one of us left to his own devices would have maybe bailed right been like yeah fuck it so that's, you know. that's interesting. It's like a support system. It's the same way that the uh, military operates. And one of the things that, that soldiers and sailors, airmen, Marines all lose when they leave their units and, and go on to become veterans back in their hometowns, they lose that sense of camaraderie because it's, it is something that holds you accountable both in your professional and personal life, right? You strive, mm -hmm. to, be, you strive to be better because you don't want to let the people around you down. That's a really powerful motivating factor for a lot of people. And when you lose it, you lose your sense of purpose. You know what I mean? So that's a good one. I appreciate and I think that. that you're getting, and I think too that, it, it, in my case at least, I can't speak to the military at all, but in my case, I think that there creates a little bit of a of a fear of missing out mm. when you're when you're in step and you see people around you and you're like, man, that's going to be cool, you know? He's like doing something that's going to be cool. It's going to lead to cool opportunities, and and then you could either have an attitude like, oh, must be nice, or you could have an attitude like, dude, I'm locked step. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm I'm going too, man, because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be the dumbass left behind here. Right. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. So uh, let's where, where can everybody find you on social media and talk about your books and uh, and the Netflix show? Yeah, I want to pitch my latest book, um, the Meat Eater Guide to Wilderness Skills and Survival. Just came out. Um, check that one out. It's got a lot of very like very practical, pragmatic, grounded information about wilderness skills and survival tailored toward people who are choosing to through lifestyle profession whatever spend a lot of time in wild places spend a lot of time out in nature and you want to do it in a way that you um are effective and able to accomplish goals that you have while there so it's like good information Sweet. um instagram i i like to do stuff on instagram at steven ranella and the best way to go find kind of all of our stuff and and, and links to netflix and youtube series we do is to go to the meateater.com and i appreciate the chance to plug that guy absolutely yeah of course man uh shit unbelievable show dude you're you're wildly entertaining a little too tall could have used a few pounds uh we used to say it could have loosed a few pounds yeah you could have <laughs> bring that back around to night moves that is the opening line of bob seeger's night moves uncle bobby as we call him in the biz i'm kidding i don't know him that well to call him uncle bobby but you do God damn it. Uh, check out his podcast. Check out his Netflix show and his new book. Holy shit, man. Please come back soon. That was yeah. one of my one of my favorite Thanks, episodes, dude. Appreciate Absolutely. it, man. I'll come out anytime. Awesome. Right, we good. appreciate uh, you being here. For D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I am Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>